Hello there, happy Friday. Well, it's a very quiet happy Friday because I'm all on my own. Family have gone to Scotland until Sunday and taken the little four-legged things with them. So there will be nobody busted in saying, sorry, there will be no little doggies going, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> So you're stuck with just me. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things been happening this week. Not appertaining, oh God, it's a hair in my eye. Not appertaining really to anything to do with crochet. Um, so maybe, but not mostly. Uh, I went to Knit Club on Wednesday. Called in Marks and Spencers and got two huge bags of food. And funny enough, I don't know whether it was a premonition or what, but I was coming back up the seafront, because I come up the seafront from Cleveland. Bear in mind, I already knew that one of the front tyres, yes, again, here we go again, was going a little bit bold. So I was going a bit cautiously, you know, not going down any bumps or anything, just being cautious. And it ran through my mind and I thought, oh, I do hope I don't break down on the seafront. Because there would be no way to rescue me. I need a low loader to rescue me because it's such a high scooter. And it's only authorised vehicles, you know, that are on the seafront. So there is no way a low loader could have come and rescued me. So I don't know quite what I would have done if I'd have broken down in the middle of there. Anyway, I came off the seafront, turned the corner into our street. Oh, I thought something not right here. A bit off. <laughs> Looks down. Hmm. The left front tire had gone. So there was no point, you know, phoning anybody to rescue me because I was like three or four doors away from home. So I thought the tire is ruined. I may as well ruin it further by carrying on home. All was well, like until I came to turn into the driveway and it wouldn't turn. <laughs> Nearly finished up in next door's grass. It just wouldn't, wouldn't turn. So I came in and I said to my son, oh gosh, I said, I had a lucky escape, had an unlucky escape. I said, unlucky I got a puncture, but lucky I was like three or four doors away from home. So I looked at it and he said, it's not a puncture, mother. He said, the tyre's completely bald. So I rings up the scooter man and of course he'd gone home. So I left him a message. Anyway, he got back to me uh, with a message saying, I'll try and sort it out. So the following morning, I was due to go to the cafe with my friend, so we decided we would just share a taxi. You know, I pay one way, she pay the one way back on the other way around. Okay. So we did that. Meanwhile, he phones me, the scooter man, while I'm in the cafe where there's no signal whatsoever. Beach, is it BFK? Beachfront Cafe or whatever it is. Can he sort you into now? Because you've got absolutely no... Wi-Fi signal in the cafe whatsoever. You cannot get a message, you can't phone. I tried to go and stand outside like a, yeah, to phone him back again to see what was going on. Anyway, he's, he's been in touch with the manufacturers and they're having to put me on solid tyres. I don't think that'll do my back a lot of good, but at least I shouldn't get punctures. But the bad news is, that he can't fit them. He's got to ask for an engineer or something to come out. And they've got to jack it up. And they want to track the wheels, which is something that I'd thought myself. Um, whenever my dad bought a new car, it didn't matter, even a brand new car, straight out of the showroom, he always paid to have the wheels tracked. Because apparently it makes your tyres wear unevenly if your tyres are not tracked. I don't know whether you've ever seen cars coming towards you on the road. And my dad used to say it's crabbing. And I used to say, what do you mean, dad, it's crabbing? And he used to say the tyres are, I mean, exaggeration. The tyres are like that as they're going down the road. And it, it wears them on one side. And if you don't get them tracked, you've actually literally got to swap the tyres over so that they wear evenly. It costs quite a bit to have your tyres tracked, but as, you know, in the long run, it's better. 
So when he said to me, the engineer type of thing is coming out, because I can't do it. I said, oh, when are we talking? So he said, well, Tuesday at the earliest, Wednesday maybe, so without a scooter. I did go to my Wednesday evening knit club on my little folding mobility scooter that I'd used in Lancaster. And of course I hadn't recharged it because I didn't think I was going to need it. So I went to the knit club, you know, very, very slowly <laughs> on my little scooter. But coming back was even slower because I looked and the battery's like, <laughs> I thought, oh no. Anyway, I need to go in the garage and plug it in, just in case I have an emergency. Then I need to nip to the shops. I'm not going to Fleetwood or to Cleveland, believe me. I know technically it's supposed to do seven miles on a charge, but there's no way I would go to Cleveland or Fleetwood on that little thing. I don't think I'd have a back left when I came back. It would be, oh, because juggling does not do anything for my back. I think I've told you it's all crumbling. And when I go over bumpy bits like that, it must crumble a bit more, yeah. Still, I wrote myself a note this time to tell you what I wanted to tell you, because I do that. Oh, we've had a new fridge freezer. Well, it's not a fridge freezer, it's a freezer. It's a, um, a little chest freezer that arrived on Tuesday morning. So that's all plugged in. So no more spoiled food. The only had before was one that came from my son's and it was an upright freezer. And the door, it wasn't shutting properly. I don't think it was magnetised or whatever. It kept being left slightly open. So since we've been here, we've ruined two complete freezer loads of food. So when I found out the other day, I went into the garage and I went, oh, I said, the door's not shut properly. He said, oh, for goodness sake, don't tell me it's all defrosted again. I went, mm, 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 mm. most of it has. So he's going, ah, rah, 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 rah. so he said, we're going to get a chest freezer, you know, as soon as we can get the money together, etc, etc. Because he's had expenses, he's had cars to tax and MRTs and stuff like that this last month. I said, just pick one out. I'll pay for it, just pick one out. So it arrived on Tuesday. It's got nothing in it at the moment, but it's up to speed. So apparently when they come back from Scotland, they're going to shop and fill it up again. Yeah. So, oh, what have I got? Well, I have got actually um, a crochet magazine to show you, but I'm going to do that on a separate video because, as you know, 30 minutes in on this video and it goes that go away. Yeah. So, yeah, I took... My waistcoats in to show the naked sheep in Cleveland's. It's wool shop, by the way. What I've been making with her wool. Her wool has gone up, actually, but it's not her fault, probably. It's, it used to be five balls for £5.50 of this pato, or pato, pato. That's what I've been using for the waistcoats. But it's five for £6, but it's still not bad, is it, really, for a waistcoat? Not that I can ever sell them, but that's by the by. But these are what I've picked this time. Ooh, I can put another navy blue down, surely you can don't want to see navy blue twice, do you? Those colours. It will probably be a circular waistcoat, although I may divert off track and make one of those sort of scrappy cardigans or whatever. Although talking about scrappy bits, they did, if you're in the UK, you've probably heard of the sewing bee. It's like a competition where I think about 10 people who sew start off in this competition. And each week they're given something new to design or to make. I mean, some of them are frankly awful, but they're doing them on a time. You know, they've got to do it within a certain length of time, which probably... They probably are lovely sewers, or stitchers, or whatever you want to call them, seamstresses, seamstress men. If you can, seamstress person. <laughs> if they were given time. But they've, they're like constantly up against the clock, so their garments really are not tip top. You know, there's a lot of mistakes that they make, and they don't look quite whatever, you know. But I don't blame the people who 
where we're doing the sewing, it's just that they're up against the clock. And if you're somebody who's a bit meticulous and you like to do everything just so, you run out of time, don't you? So your garment isn't finished. So you get penalised if the garment isn't finished. You get penalised if the sleeves aren't quite set in right or you've got a gather or a pucker where you shouldn't have one yet. Anyway, my daughter-in-law, I don't watch it really. I only catch the edge of it sometimes. Because I don't sew, so it's not really all that interesting to me. Anyway, my daughter-in-law said, did you see the last one where they were getting crochet blankets? I'm making things with them. And I said, no, I didn't. I said, I'd seen the one who won, which was like a granny square jacket and skirt that she made out of a granny square blanket. I said, no, I didn't. So I went on the catch up on the computer and I saw it. And she said, oh, there was a couple there I would have won. And I'm like, really? Because, you know, whenever I crochet or anything, I don't think he ever sees a light of day. And she never asks me for anything. So I looked and I thought, the suit that won was passable. Although, you know, when you cut a granny square, you're bound to have problems, aren't you, when you just cut crochet. But it didn't look bad. She got granny squares plane going over, I thought it was thundering. There were white background around the squares um, and it was white edging and it had like the white sleeves. Well, they said cream but it looked white on the TV. And it had like a little mini skirt that was done in the squares. And I thought to myself, I thought, but I made one, I don't think she'd wear it. But the others that were there that they'd cut up, I mean, you can't cut crochet without it fraying or starting to unravel or fall apart, you know. I mean, a couple of them looked all right, like from a distance, but when they were getting a bit pernickety and they were going up close and looking at them, they were like, it's not right here. Well, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be right there, because you can't cut crochet and expect to sew it like a fabric, because it won't, it'll just carry on unraveling. But there's been a lot of controversy, because people like me who crochet are saying, what a travesty. You know, like cutting up these lovely shawls. And some of them are like baby blankets that we're using and stuff. But that brings me back to that video I think I put on Facebook where somebody in America had got into these charity shops or thrift shops, as she showed them, getting these blankets and stuff like that. And they were being sold for $1.99, $2.99. And I'm thinking, all oh, these people who sit there making blankets out blanket after blanket. Unless you know that they're going to be appreciated and you know that the person that you're giving them to is going to want them and keep them and use them. If I thought that if I'd made all that time and effort into a granny square or any kind of a blanket and somebody shoved it in the thrift shop because they didn't like it, I'd be heartbroken. That's probably why I don't make blankets. Have I got any more on this? Um, oh, the YouTube changes. I've just been watching, um, you know, Tracy from Crochet Rocks talking about the YouTube changes, about they're altering, like, you've got to have so many followers and you've got to have so many watches, so many thousand watches and so many this if you want to, you know, make any money out of it. And then you've got to start asking your subscribers for money and... This is how you grow your channel and this is how you make your money. And I was like her, I was thinking, I'm not doing that. I'm not. To me, it's like begging, isn't it, you know. If I was to say to you, oh, you, you need to pay me for me to do the videos. No. I do the videos when I want, if I want, if I don't want, I don't make, you know. And I certainly don't have any Patreon or any members because I don't have any secret things that I film only for the chosen few. I don't have any of that. You know, what you see is what you get with me, you know. I'm the same with everybody. <laughs> like in Olympic, I'm the same with everybody. I would never think to say, oh, if you pay like £5, £10 a month, you get this special whatever it is. I don't make patterns up. I don't do things, don't do giveaways. I don't do things that I can 
show anybody differently than what I do on here. So you're quite safe people. I will not be sending you a begging letter anytime soon. <laughs> I am very grateful. My channel does not grow. I'm not grumbling because I've got a loyal lot of subscribers who have stayed with me through thick and thin. I have more or less exactly the same number of subscribers I had about four years ago. They go up, they go down by two or three. But basically, I've got a lovely, lovely, loyal bunch of subscribers who stay with me through thick and thin. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for that. But I am not going to start saying, oh, grow my channel. You know, tell all your friends about me. Oh, um, I'll subscribe to you if you subscribe to me. That's another one that people use now. No, no. If you like me, you'll subscribe to me. If you don't like me, then you won't, will you? And I'm not going to, you know, barter myself in the marketplace to do anything like that. You know me. Well, I hope you know me by now. <laughs> you take me as you find me. Yeah, cheers anyway. I'm going to have a drink of my coffee. Oh, that's lovely and hot. Black coffee I drink, by the way. You come round your house, it's black coffee, two sweeteners. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> and you might chuck in a biscuit or two. Although, I still do not have my injections yet. <sighs> I look online and they say there's a worldwide shortage of them. And it'll probably be 2024 before they come back in. All because these celebrities are jabbing themselves with them. Because one of the side effects is, I suppose if you jabbed yourself every day, which I don't have to do thankfully. It makes you lose weight, apparently. So, because of that, and because they're all buying them off prescription, there's no ones available for the diabetics like myself who need just one a week. Just one a week. I mean, admittedly, I haven't noticed any weight loss because I'm only doing one a week. But I have noticed it's maintained my weight, and I'm not as hungry as I used to be. And I looked online and it says, don't stop taking them. Suddenly you've got to wean yourself off them. I'm like, I don't have a choice. I can't get them. There's no chance of me getting them. I asked my GP, I said, well, what do I do? You know, no, I can't get these injections. And he said, you have to be more careful with your diet. And I'm thinking, why don't they tell the obese people who are jabbing themselves every day for weight loss? Why don't they tell them? to be more careful with their diet, watch what they're eating. I'm sorry, but I think, I know obesity is something that a lot of people can't help when they're massive, right? Now, and they've got these disorders where they don't feel full. But by and large, if you are just overweight, you can help yourself. I did, I lost three and a half stone. Um, it's not easy, I'm not saying it's easy, you know? Because I've got a sweet tooth and I do love a biscuit and I do love a chocolate bar. If you watch me on live, you know that. You know I like me crisps or my potato chips, whatever you call them. And I do love me chocolate bar. So I'm not the one who could adv advocate. You have got to. But it's just annoying that, you know, my diabetes levels are going up the pole here. They're going all over the place because I can't get this drug. And yet celebs are paying, what, 150 pound an injection, you know, to keep their weight down instead of dieting. Sorry, mate. Dieting is the way forward, dear, not pinching my diabetic jabs. Anyway, that's my pet peeve. That's my rant of the day, as Sheila would say. If you know what Sheila is, Sheila knits, she's a, a Geordie, she's up in Newcastle. I think it's Sheila's knitting tips or something. She goes off on, she goes, I'm going to do a rant. I should have announced that, shouldn't I? I'm going to do a rant about my diabetes injection. Hmm. Anyway... After finding all those, you know, project bags, I've still not got any works in progress. Well, I've got two at the moment. I've got the never-ending sort of Harry Styles type squares cardigan that I keep doing a square of. That may be a while before I do that. But I have been doing my... Oh, sorry for bending over. I have been doing my No Pattern is one of Janet's sweaters in that lovely yarn um, that looks a bit heathery. I've done the back, 
and I've done the front. Obviously got to stitch them together and do neck bands and ribbons and edges because I don't want it quite that long but never mind. And we have done one sleeve. Mm -hmm. The problem with Janet is that she freestyles. And another problem with Janet is she writes nothing down. So when she comes to do a second sleeve, in this lovely price wise, that I got from Woolworths, but I think Tracy from Crochet Rock sells it. Um, it's in the, uh, I'm, I'm not on this, what's it called? Heather, Heather Mix. When I come to start the second sleeve, of course I'm clueless, aren't I? Well, that's sort of a permanent state of affairs with me being clueless. Yeah. So now I'm trying to follow Roby Roby Row so I can get the second sleeve done. I was hoping to finish it this week, you know, then it's out, you know. I have sort of like a time span of concentration or whatever you want to call it. I'm not one of these people that can have like dozens of works in progress, dozens of whips. I always think that sounds vaguely sort of, you know, what do they call it, masochistic or something when you say you've got loads of whips. <laughs> what did they used to say? Or was it, uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but whips and chains excite me? No. <laughs> don't quote me on that, they don't. Um, yeah, so when people say I've got so many whips, I've got this vision of like whiplash, whiplash. <laughs> I never think of works in progress. It's the way my mind works, yeah. Of course, I'm old fashioned. And I mean, we used to say, how many things have you got on the hook? Or how many things have you got on your needle? Or how many projects have you got? We used to say, well, I've got them whips. Yeah. Looking at some people's YouTubes, I don't think they should call them whips. I think they should call them forgetting, forgotten, not forgetting, forgotten things in a bag, I think they should call them. You know, I have been crocheting this for about, since my son was born and he's 25 now, you know. I don't think you should legally call them a whip. I think you should call them the forgotten, yeah? Or... There's one lady who does this um, continue or frog or something, you know. And I'm thinking, if you've had it in your half done or quarter done in your cupboard, you know, for about the last 15 years, I really think you should done that way and, you know, make it into something else. You know, you've obviously gone off it or forgotten the pattern, lost the pattern, completely lost the plot. You know, you've obviously done something, haven't you? So you may as well just done that whole thing and, turn it into something useful, you know. If I go off anything and leave it like that, it's a waste of time. I may as well just unravel because if I haven't completed it, finished it within a certain time scale, if I put it in a bag, it may as well go in the bin, yeah, because it goes into the forgotten. Janet has put it out of her mind and it has gone. So I only usually have two projects on the go at the most. Sometimes it's one knit, one crochet. At the moment it's two crochet I've got. I am thinking of other things, which is why I've got things on my brain that I want to do, which is why I want to finish this. I've got so far with this sweater, I've only got to finish the sleeve and do all the trimmings, you know. I mean, the neckbands and the ribs and everything alone will take me, you know, over one night to do. So I'm being a bit optimistic thinking I might have finished it by the weekend, but I am on my own and there's no one in the house, so you'd never know you're looking a raffle. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I know what else I was going to say. We've still got the saga of the missing parcel. FedEx keep sending me updates, more or less implying that it's coming back to me. My friend in America keeps saying, she had sent me a news, a, a news, an email news saying good news because she got one saying that it was going to her. So it's like, watch this space. Please keep your fingers and your toes crossed because at this moment in time, although it's not lost, 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 it, I don't seem to be able to find out for sure whether it's coming back to me or it's going to be friend in America. 
Another of my friends, she's an artist, an artist, she paints. She sent a parcel to America at a similar time to me and hers has gone missing, or so we thought. It turned up back at her house, I think it was the other day, flattened and ringing wet through. So, I don't know why it wasn't delivered. You know, the uh, customer swears blind like, you know, no attempt was made to deliver it, so where did it go? Hmm? So she's now got to so we're playing back from the post office. It's ringing wet through. It's obviously ruined your canvas. It's ruined your packaging. You know, if the canvas was salvageable, if you could dry it out or whatever, you've still got to wrap it up again, put more postage on it again and send it off to your customer again. Either that or you have to refund. So, I mean, it's the post office fault, isn't it, for it, whatever it's been. It's absolutely sopping wet through. You know, come on. So she said if she packages it up again, she's going to put it in a plastic bag inside, you know, if she does have to repackage it. But I would claim off the post office because, I mean, you don't know when that canvas dries out, it could warp or something. It could not be right anymore. So annoying, everything going missing. Yeah. I mean, a friend of mine, they posted something off and I think it was about three months later when the person actually got it, yeah. And I mean, and at this day and age when everything's done digital, everything's done automated, it's supposed to be fast-tracked into it and woo. And it turns up, yeah. And somebody else I know got a parcel the other day that had been posted in May. And they only got it the other day. I've had one other parcel go missing in the UK. And uh, according to the tracking, she never got it. So where that went, I don't know. Because I always put my address on the back, you know, for them to send it back to me. You know, if it's got ripped, you know, in transit or the contents have fallen out of it or something. But having said that, I, I, I watch a programme called The Secrets of the London Underground. And the other day they were doing the lost property. And honestly, it was the size of an aircraft hangar. All the things. And apparently they keep things, I think it's something like about three months. Anything that's of great, great value, because they've had brooches and necklaces that are really expensive, lost. They keep that longer, you know, to see whether people, and they do try to, you know, track them down or something. And they get, I think it's something like about a thousand mobile phones left on trains every day. Every day. And he said, whilst we try to reconnect people with their phone type of thing, you know, unless they can phone it and it rings, like, and they can sort through this big box full to see if it rings. I mean, they obviously put them, don't put them in a huge, huge box, they put them in a box per day, you know. If you knew what day it was missing, you've got a chance with this big box. So unless you can ring it and it rings, unless it's still got battery life, or unless you can describe it other than it's black and it's like that, you know, you've got no chance. And I'm thinking, what on earth do they do with all these thousands of mobile phones? Oh, and there's my mobile phone telling me to shut up. Well, you may, you may see me again, actually, today, uh, because I've got a, a magazine to show you. So, hold tight, watch this space. Bye for now.